So the body is broken down into static and dynamic. Static is what does not move, and dynamic is what does move. And in the next two videos, I'm going to break down more in detail the difference between static and dynamic. So static is what does not move. And the main static part of your body is the posture. The posture should be still for the most part, and it's good posture if it's a straight posture. And typically, there's different ways to visualize this. Some people say, imagine that there's a string on the top of your head and someone is pulling the string up. One of the ways that I like to visualize it is to see whether or not you can put a book on your head and not only put it on your head, can you keep it on your head as you're walking? This will allow you to work out the micro muscles, or better yet, become aware of the micro muscles to see all the little variables that make up a straight posture. Just because it's straight does not mean there's not nuance within it. It takes a lot of work to have a straight posture, and a lot of people can have the straight posture when things are going their way, but their posture starts to get scrunched up when things are not going their way. So here's a hack. The next time you are nervous, you'll most likely feel your posture getting smaller and smaller and it's going from static to dynamic. In this moment, rather than allowing it to be dynamic, make it straight and suddenly you will feel a lot better. So the dynamic body language can be broken down into the palms, the face, and tonality. Tonality, even though you cannot see it, it is something that is a part of the body language. We undermine the voice because the voice is invisible, but we mustn't. A dynamic voice is a beautiful voice. A static voice, on the other hand, is known as a monotone voice. Our face, our face has a different parts to it. There's our lips, and then there's our eyes. Is your lips always the same? I hope not. I hope you're not smiling in a funeral, or you're frowning when your friend is telling you about a job promotion. This shows that the face is capable of adjusting depending on the variables that are presented in the external world. What about the palms? Let's say there's a stranger that you just met and your palms are tucked away in your pocket for the entire interaction. Once the stranger leaves, they're going to feel something weird about you. It's going to feel as though that there's not much rapport. For some reason, they can't quite articulate it, but here it is. We trust human beings whose palms we can see. But it doesn't always have to be visible. At certain times, you show the palms, other times, you put it in your pocket, once again, indicating that it is dynamic. So the palms, the facial gestures, and the tonality are what should be dynamic in terms of body language. So now we understand the difference between static and dynamic. Whenever spotting if someone has comfortable body language or uncomfortable body language, we should see if static is being static and dynamic is being dynamic. Once we flip it, that's when uncomfortable body language is happening. Allow me to give you two examples. You ever had that one moment when someone is fidgeting a lot? Uh, their body is going up, down, uh, they're being very jerky. This is when their posture which should be static, is suddenly dynamic. And typically, this person is acting like this in this particular scenario because they feel uncomfortable. Maybe you're speaking about something that uh, they don't feel comfortable discussing. Maybe they have a speech coming up. Maybe they have a high pressure networking scenario coming up. In any of these cases, a static variable, which is the posture, has become dynamic indicating that this is uncomfortable body language. 
Another example, have you ever had that moment when someone is speaking to you like this, where they are not breaking eye contact at all, they're just looking at you the entire time? Does this feel warm to you? Does this feel good? No. The reason why is because eye contact, which should be dynamic, has suddenly become static. And this isn't a good thing because with this type of eye contact, it feels as though that I'm glaring at you. But every now and then, if I take an eye break, then I look back at you, uh, this goes back to being a comfortable body language. So one of the main things that you want to focus on whenever trying to spot a comfortable body language from uncomfortable is to see if static has become dynamic and dynamic has become static.